uh, I've been doing a lot of labour intensive videos recently so I thought it would be nice to just do one that was a bit of fun and also something I have to get out of my system which is to talk about Sherlock's Reichenbach fall. Now there's probably there's lots of theories on the internet about the Reichenbach fall and how Sherlock survived it and everything and they're probably quite similar to mine but I kind of like my theory and it's not that I want to be right it's just that I kind of want to put it out there because I kind of want to make a point um, about my sort of belief in Sherlock. Because everybody has this idea that Sherlock's done like all these magical tricks and delusions because Sherlock is so smart but he is super smart and he's done all this and he's seen it all coming. And to me it's just like why can't Sherlock just be Sherlock be himself, be quite smart and I have a great belief in kind of logic and science and I think Sherlock has that and I don't think he needs to do all those tricks. Everyone has this idea they could have been a dummy on the top of the building or there was a second Sherlock and the man who banged into um, Watson on the bike was doing it to disorientate him. There's all this kind of elaborate thing and I kind of think well why does it have to be that complicated? Sometimes things can be really simple. My brilliant theory is the Sherlock threw himself off a building. It's, it's that simple. I think Sherlock threw himself off a building and Sherlock was smart enough and scientific enough about it to work out his best chances of surviving. And there are some ways to survive a fall. I mean a huge fall like that off you know, the Bart building, that's massive. The chances of surviving that are really minimal. But people have survived large falls before. The, the best way to survive a fall that they recommend is to arch your body so basically to fall flat like that, arch your arms and legs back. That helps as well if you've got clothing on. It also helps if you're wearing a nice big trench coat, as Sherlock does, and spread yourself out and you build up a sort of wind resistance. Um, but it's also a good idea, I didn't imagine this would be recommended, but to actually try and land on your feet, because that sort of protects, I suppose, your vital organs up here. So you bend your knees and you sort of try to land on your feet, which seems ridiculous because you'd think you'd break everything, but I suppose breaking your legs is better than breaking your head and everything. They also recommend sort of li um, falling on your side and sometimes people recommend falling on the back of your head because I imagine the front lobe is more important than, I can't remember which bit's at the back. Um, and you see Sherlock does actually do all of these things. I think Sherlock would have known enough you know, Sherlock is, he knows a lot about physics and science, the way the human body works, and he would have known how to prepare himself for that fall. He probably didn't think he was going to survive, but maybe the whole thing in earlier in the episode with Molly is that he's preparing Molly for the fact that, you know, to try and um, rescue him, or at least to, well, he probably actually thinks he's going to survive and just wants Molly to, you know, sign off on death certificate. Although I'm not sure how Molly would have done that, because Molly works as, like, a coroner, so I'm not sure how she would have had a part in it. But the reason I think he really did it is because he cried. And why would Sherlock have cried unless he thought there was a real chance that he was going to die or there was a real chance his friends were going to get hurt? But I think going on about a bus and a crash mat and all this thing with what's just overcomplicating things. I mean, why isn't it enough? Why isn't Sherlock just enough by himself? I mean, he says to Moriarty, I will do things ordinary people won't do, and he will. There is a, another thing in Sherlock, which I was kind of contemplating. Sherlock brings up this um, drug in the middle of the episode, something called um, Rhododendron Ponticom, and, and I thought maybe it's a muscle relaxant, because I know muscle relaxants can improve your chances of surviving when you're in a sort of a car accident or a big fall. But Rhododendron Ponticon isn't actually a muscle relaxant, it slows the heart rate and it slows the breathing. And really the only reason Sherlock would have had to take that is to maybe fool the doctors that he had possibly died and then Molly could have had the um, antidote. It could turn out to be you know, Sherlock had another man on the roof and there was a dummy and the bus was in the way and the pavement was made out of some kind of softer material and he had to have John look at him from a certain angle so the light hit the certain way so it looked like him. There's all these kind of possibilities but I think that's what's kind of cool and brilliant about Stephen Moffat and Mark Gatiss is that we are all going, what the hell happened? I mean, I would be really happy if it was just that Sherlock had done the heroic thing and used his intellect and saved himself and saved his friends. I think that would be pretty awesome. 